Sun Life Stadium in Miami, where today one of these teams, the Chargers or the Dolphins, will earn a seat in the AFC wildcard race. The Miami Dolphins locker room turmoil has been well documented and is ongoing, and it only exacerbates a slide which has seen Miami drop five of its last six games. Yet, they're in the playoff picture, as are the Chargers, despite their two-game losing streak. Today's winner makes the other AFC contenders sit up and take notice. The AFC playoff picture shows division leaders Kansas City, New England, Indy, and Cincy, and West runner-up Denver with a hold on one wildcard spot, the other up for grabs. Hi, everyone. Welcome to South Florida. Greg Gumbel along with my Hall of Fame partner, Dan Deardorff. Two teams, Dan, trying to get better. The San Diego Chargers chalking up a lot of air miles and the Miami Dolphins chalking up a lot of headlines. It's hard to come from the West Coast all the way to the East Coast for a 1 o'clock game because that's a 10 o'clock start on their body clocks. And I think the Chargers have really benefited from this now being a 4.05 kickoff. That's 1 o'clock their time. And for the Chargers, Greg, I mean, for the uh, Dolphins, let's be realistic. They all say that they're not distracted. We're about to find out. Yeah, let's uh, go a little CBS eye-to-eye -eye here and figure out who the possible difference makers might be today. Well, Phillip Rivers, the quarterback of the Chargers, is off to a great start this season. Only seven interceptions. Keep in mind, he's thrown 35 over the last two years. This new passing game, the system suits him very well. And he's going to be chased around by Cameron Wake. Five and a half sacks on a season. One of the best true pass rushers in the National Football League. Cameron Wake and the defensive line for the Dolphins is going to have to get it done today because offensively they're really hurting. And today's game being broadcast in Spanish. We're available using the SAP button on your television. San Diego Chargers have won the toss and they will defer. So they will kick to the Miami Dolphins. They'll get their hands on the football first. That is Nick Novak getting set to kick it away. And number 34 in the end zone for the Dolphins is Marcus Thigpen. Second year man out of Indiana. So a couple of four and five teams trying to get relevant in the race for the wild card. And that one to sail out of the end zone for the touchback. Second-year quarterback Ryan Tannehill, 13 touchdown passes, 10 interceptions. He's been on the turf, sacked 20, 37 times, and that is an average of four-plus sacks a game. And it's also the most sacks allowed by any team in the National Football League. Right? It just, it just Greg, what you say? Four sacks a game. That, that is just hideous pass protection. That's a lot of whitening detergent on those uniforms uh, at the end of the uh, game. The, the old saying, you want your quarterback clean at the end of the game? Go, go. For Tannehill, you want to survive the end of the game. This is Lamar Miller, and Lamar Miller is going nowhere on first down. On the offensive line, Mike Pouncey out of the game due to illness today. Nate Garner switches over from left guard to center, and the Dolphins have to get speedy Mike Wallace more involved. 40 receptions, just one of them for a touchdown this year. Well, keep in mind, Jonathan Martin is gone. Uh, Richie Incognito is suspended. So now the left guard is playing center. The left guard is making his first start ever in the National Football League. Sam Brenner signed off the practice squad yesterday. Santa Hill, quick pass, and that's complete on the outside. Mike Wallace, and Wallace out of bounds. That's enough for a first down. Well, this has been a problem for the Chargers, some of their tackling in the secondary. And this time it's Sharice Wright, who's right there. All he has to do is make a simple tackle, and it ends up being a punting situation. And his gaff allows Miami to move the chains. First down, Miami. Just across the 35-yard line. Tannehill stands in. That's Hartline. Hartline up the middle to midfield and into San Diego territory for another first down. Well, Brian Hartline, there's no doubt that he is Ryan Tannehill's go-to guy. Mike McCoy, the head coach of the Chargers, saying, hey, we know when he wants a completion, he's going to Hartline. Hartline is having a fantastic year, very sure-handed. He's a good blocker as well. Not going to run away from anybody, but an excellent route runner. Dolphins now at the Chargers 48. Penalty markers fly as that give to Lamar Miller goes nowhere. Our referee today is Pete Morelli. Offside, number 90 defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. 
That penalty is on Thomas Kaiser, outside linebacker. Well, right now, the Miami offensive drive is being aided by some sloppy play on the side of the Chargers. So it's a first and five now from the 43. Straight drop for Tannehill. Going deep down the near sideline for Hartline. Incomplete at the 10-yard line. Well, a lot of contact streaking down the sideline between Cox and Hartline. And you could actually see that Hartline was using his right hand to kind of get a little separation from Cox. So every time you feel sorry for a receiver, look at the way Hartline was doing it there and realize it's a two-way street. On second and five, Tannehill near side. And that's complete to the 40. And inside the 40 is Rashard Matthews. Chargers defense, 3-4, right in the middle of it. Up front, Cam Thomas at 6'4", 330 pounds. Jarrett Johnson was a question mark this week with a hamstring. He is going today. And the veteran in a defensive backfield that needs to create some turnovers is seventh-year safety Eric Weddle out of Utah. Third and a short two. Tannehill, that's complete to the 35-yard line, and Dick making more mileage is Charles Clay inside the 25 to about the 22, and another Miami first down. Well, you can see that Miami on this first drive is going to the air and abandoning the running game, which I think is a very smart move. Their offensive line is so convoluted in there. And Charles Clay, you know, he, you see 42 and you're going, well, that can't be a tight end. Well, they stick the fullback out there. Well, he's kind of a hybrid, but as you saw right there, he's able to sell the go pattern and broke it off short. That was a really a nicely run route by Charles Clay. Six offensive plays, five passes, and here comes another one. Tannehill throwing right side this time to the 10-yard line. That's complete to Wallace, and it'll be first and goal at the nine. Well, again, it's the matchup between Mike Wallace and Sharice Wright. And look at the cushion that Wright is giving him. And when he turned his hips that far downfield, when Mike Wallace sold that he was going to the corner, you could see the minute Sharice Wright turned those hips, he's done for. If that, ends up, if that ends up being a pattern underneath, no way he can recover. You see how well the Dolphins have performed in goal-to-goal -goal situations, 11 out of 12. to the six-yard line. Dan, when you're that new on the offensive line, some new players playing their first games and others in new positions, is it easier to pass block than run block? Yes, it most certainly is. And I, uh, pass blocking, you've either got the skills or you don't, but a lot of it is, you know, just making sure that you put a hat on the right guy. Yeah. There's a lot more nuance involved yeah, in the running game, Plus even it. though it doesn't look like it with those big guys butting heads Three. down there. Go, go! On second and goal, penalty markers fly, and this ball count. False start, number 74 offense. Five-yard penalty remains, second down. That's John Jerry. Now, another thing to watch is the exchange that'll happen today between Ryan Tannehill and a new center, Nate Garner. Yeah, Mike Pouncey, who's been kind of a, you know, rock in there for the last three years, is missing this game because of an illness. Yesterday, the Dolphins were convinced that he was going to play, but uh, something happened between yesterday and today, and he's not even active. So you're right, a new guy in the middle and Nate Garner. So now it's second and goal from the 11 in Tannehill. Over the middle, in and out of the hands of Hartline. He should have had it. Well, Hartline throwing his uh, hands up in the air in exasperation. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why, he, he, unless he's upset with himself, because that's the only other guy that should be blamed. Tannehill put the ball right there where he could have taken it in full stride. So now Tannehill on third and goal. Four 
is Rashard Matthews. Well, and you can see San Diego's plan. They only rush three. They drop eight in coverage, which means they're going to make everything happen in front of them. And somebody's going to have to break multiple tackles to get into the end zone. So the Dolphins, uh, pretty good opening drive. Stalls inside the, the five-yard line and onto the field for the field goal. Comes Caleb Sturgis. This one from 22 yards out. And it is good. 9-13 to play in the first quarter. Phillip Rivers gets his chance and we come back. It's a 3-0 Miami Dolphins lead. 76-yard drive in 11 plays, capped by the Caleb Sturgis field goal, and Miami with a 3-0 lead. Two deep men now as uh, Sturgis gets set to kick it away. Two deep men are Ronnie Brown, the ex-Miami Dolphin, number 23, and Danny Woodhead, number 39. one out of the end zone so that will come out to the 20-yard line and the highly efficient Philip Rivers will lead the offense onto the field in just a moment the NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines find our fares online only at southwest.com Taco Bell sometimes you gotta live Moss and by Bud Light official beer sponsor of the NFL First down, Philip Rivers with time, and now throws and out of the backfield is Ryan Matthews, and Matthews to about the 25-yard line. A look at the offense. Injuries have forced the Chargers to drastically shuffle their roll line. The rookie DJ Fluker moving the left tackle, and we'll get a look today at the bright young star on offense, third-round draft pick Keenan Allen, the wide receiver from Cal. A yard short of a first down. The Dolphin defense has registered 27 sacks. Cameron Wake, team leader with five and a half of them. Danelle Ellerby holds down the middle linebacker slot, a free agent acquisition from Baltimore. Miami's leading tackler and a cornerback, Dimitri Patterson, in his seventh year out of Tuskegee, has a third of the Dolphins' 12 interceptions. Pretty impressive by Patterson that he's got four interceptions. The guy's missed five games. Third and one. Matthew gets the first down and more across the 35 and wrestled down at about the 37 and a half yard line by Wheeler and Ellerby. That's a first down for the Chargers. You know, I said earlier, Dan, the highly efficient Philip Rivers, a phenomenal 71.6 completion percentage this season. Well, this new offense, uh, uh, Mike McCoy, the head coach, and Ken Wisenhunt, the offensive coordinator, it's it's a lot shorter routes, a lot more intermediate routes, and they really love to throw to their back. You know, Danny Woodhead's got 53 receptions. When you shorten the passing game, your percentage of completion should go up. Nudging it just across the 40-yard line. There is offensive coordinator Ken Wisenhut, and yeah, Dan Danny Woodhead, 53 receptions. That's tops among all NFL running backs coming into this week. And, it, it, you know, they're just not stretching the field uh, as much as some teams try to do. And, and you know, the, so what do you get? I mean, you got a guy like Phillip Rivers who's totally bought into this system, and nobody is happier that he's throwing fewer picks. Than he. One thing about it, Greg, when you're with Philip, you know he still loves the game. Quick pass. That's complete to Matthews out of the backfield, across midfield, and into Miami territory before Dimitri Patterson brings him down. Well, if you telegraph the blitz like Miami did in this situation, Philip Rivers is going to make you pay for it. And, you know, you could see he's got the hot read. He knows it's coming from his left. And what's he do? He runs Ryan Matthews right in behind it. And that's an easy completion. An easy movement of the chains. Two veterans there doing what they're supposed to do facing a blitz. Oh, I like him getting 
first down. San Diego at the Miami 48. Jimmy Wilson makes the stop. Well, Greg mentioned that this offensive line is uh, kind of in a state of flux as well. Flipping tackles. We're going right in behind DJ Fluker. Number 76 there on the left side of your screen, and you can see another good block down to the inside by, by Green. But Fluker, this guy is a pro bowler for years. This is Danny Woodhead with his first carry and he gets a first down inside the 35 to the 33. You know, Danny Woodhead and DJ Fluker are really the the big and the little of this San Diego offense. DJ Fluker, one of the biggest people I've ever seen. Danny Woodhead at 5'8", and that is up, he's on his little tippy toes, I think, to hit 5'8". DJ Fluker, one of the biggest guys you will ever see. And Woodhead, I don't care if it's Phillip Rivers, it doesn't matter if it's Tom Brady, quarterback, he can block, he can run, and he's an outstanding receiver. Running out of time. They get the snap off. Little pump fake. Rivers throwing, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Brent Grimes. Grimes with his third pick of the season. Thought for a moment he would be called out of bounds back and around the 10 yard line, but the official was right there and didn't make a call. Yeah, my impression was he stayed in bounds after he caught this. And he does. Brent Grimes is playing well. So here are the Dolphins with the ball again at their own 21-yard line. 28! Go, go! Lamar Miller up the middle, and we get penalty flags. Let's go back to that pick. Yeah, let's go back and take a look at it, Greg. Down here, this is uh, Vincent Brown down here. And, and when he's confronted with coverage by Grimes, watch him go to the middle of the field instead of the sideline. And I think that the throw from Rivers, he's throwing to a spot. And I think he expected Vincent Brown to break towards the sideline, not towards the numbers. Offside call against the Chargers. It's now first and five after they've marched off the penalty. So Tannehill from his own 26 and is going to throw. Right side of the field. And that's right on the money short of the 40-yard line to Wallace. We said he had to get involved today, and so far he is. Well, Mike Wallace, uh, everybody knows what a deep threat he is, but you can use that threat of the deep route to find yourself a lot of room underneath, and that is what Wallace is doing so far against Sharif Wright, the corner that's covering him. Santa Hill, seven out of nine throwing so far, and that quick pass is going nowhere. Wallace brought to a halt by Marcus Gilchrist. Well, that whole play is predicated on the tackle being out being able to get out there in time to pick off that corner force. And yeah, well, good luck with that. Gilchrist was, he beat Tyson Claybo to the spot by a good three or four yards. 10 minutes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Claybo, Claybo was just thinking about getting out there by the time he was making the hit. Second and 14. side by Derek Cox. Derek Cox was a free agent acquisition, got a big contract. He has been benched in each of the last two games for ineffective play, and you, you just can't pass up opportunities like that. That is a San Diego touchdown. He could have tap danced his way into the end zone. And uh, Derek Cox doesn't have a whole lot of fans in San Diego right now, and what few he had might have jumped ship after that. Third and 14. <laughs> Tannehill with time again, the near sideline, and this time he is picked off at the 50-yard line by Johnny Patrick, number 26, having been touched down and now knocked out of bounds by Tannehill at the 14-yard line. Well, Johnny Patrick got up like he thought he was down by contact, and then he's standing there, and I guess he didn't hear a whistle. 
Tannehill with nothing but time, able to step into the throw. He doesn't see Patrick as he's trying to go to Hardline. And if Hardline made contact with Patrick at all, he's down by contact. We're going to... Because it's a turnover, it's automatically reviewed upstairs. No question, he runs in to Brian Hartline and ends up on the ground. That That's just a, yeah. slow, a non-existent whistle. Right. I do. The ruling on the field is after the interception, the, receipt, the interceptor was down by contact. If that was the ruling on the field, why was he running and nobody was blowing whistles? No question that he's down by contact. Right there, he runs right into heart line. And that's where San Diego will start. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the all-new one Xbox One. Jump ahead. And by Aflac. When you're sick or hurt, Aflac pays you cash. Find out more at Aflac.com. It's early yet, and we still have superb aerial coverage of today's game. That's provided by MetLife. Chargers with their second possession, starting uh, just into Miami territory. Rivers throwing. Gates. Caught. I'm sorry, it's Ladarius Green, not Antonio Gates. That's tight end Ladarius Green in his second year out of Louisiana Lafayette. And that's his eighth reception of the year. And let me tell you something. What a beautiful throw by Phillip Rivers. Leading him back to the inside. And that is really tight coverage by Brent Grimes. I mean, look at Grimes. He's got a hand on the football. He's he, You can't hardly be in any better position. A, a perfect throw and a really competitive effort to go get it by Green. about the 12. So Tannehill with four completions to his own guys and one to the other ones. Well, and, and he really got away. You would think that, you know, dodging the bullet like he did when it, Derek uh, Cox dropped the one, comes right back. He got fooled by their coverage, though. He thought he had single coverage on the outside. It was an excellent job by the Chargers of disguising. Second and five, Chargers knocking on the door. Matthew. To the five. Yeah, if we could, I just want to show you how he got confused. Here, he thinks he's got single coverage out here on Harlan. What he can't imagine is that from the inside, Johnny Patrick is going to fall back into this. Instead of cover the slot, He's going to come back from underneath. And Ryan Tannehill had no idea that he was coming all the way out from slot coverage to make that interception. That, that was just really, really well done by San Diego. So it's a first and goal from the five-yard line. Woodhead in the backfield with Tannehill. Oh, excuse me, with Philip Rivers. Rivers over the middle in the end zone. Touchdown, that's Antonio Gates. Third of the year, 86th touchdown catch of his career. And you can see instead of a bump and a reroute, there was no contact on Gates and Rashad Jones was just left all by himself back there. You have got in a in inside in a goal to go situation in the red zone. You have got to reroute that tight end. You cannot give him a clean release or else you're going to pay for it like that. Novak's extra point attempt is good. Just 18 seconds remaining here in the first quarter and Philip Rivers finds Antonio Gates for the touchdown and a 7-3 charger lead. Football fans get a fresh start with Player Challenge, a four-week game that now includes even bigger cash prizes. See rules and sign up at cbssports.com slash challenge. Marcus Thigpen deep for the kick. And they will not 
run this one out. It's the touchback. And it'll come out to the 20-yard line, and let's go back to that touchdown, Dan. Well, I've got a memo for the Miami defense. This guy's pretty good. Hit him right there. Donnell Ellerby, the inside linebacker, actually, like, jumps out of the way and says, okay, here's our end zone. Come on in, Mr. Gates. Make yourself at home. You have got to put a hat and reroute, stop, disrupt the timing, whatever you want to say. You can't give a Hall of Famer like Antonio Gates an invitation into your end zone. So from the 20-yard line, Daniel Thomas now leading running back for the Dolphins. And Tannehill to throw under pressure, escapes, looking over the middle and wide open, complete across the 40 to the 45-yard line is Richard Matthews. Good scramble, good look, good throw from Tannehill to Matthews, and that brings us to the end of the first quarter. We've played 15 minutes here in South Florida. 7-3, Chargers back after this. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Not a bad start to the day for Ryan Tannehill. Those are his numbers and five of those completions to Richard Matthews for 31 yards. Except for that one interception. It's uh, a bit of a blemish. Tannehill with time. Going deep. Has a man open. Incomplete. And there, Under through, it appeared, Mike it Wallace. And Greg, this has been an ongoing problem for Ryan Tannehill his inaccuracy on his deep throws. Mike Wallace has beaten Sharice Wright by three yards, and he has to wait for the football. This happened last week. This has happened with some regularity, and Mike Wallace and Ryan Tannehill's inability to really get in sync on the long-range passing game is a real problem for the Dolphins. Go, go, go. Penalty markers fly. The give is to Thomas. It appears the Chargers jumped, but we'll wait for the call from Pete Morelli. Side, number 90 defense, five yard penalty. Remain second down. You know, Mike Wallace, uh, a, a big free agent acquisition, and you can see prior, those four years in Pittsburgh, eight touchdowns a year. Those were his averages. His four years, he had 6, 10, 8, and 8, and now only one touchdown through nine games with the Dolphins. Now, he's had his share of drops. Don't get me wrong. He's been a contributor, but he's been open a number of times, and the, just, the connection wasn't there. To play and play is out of bounds about two yards short of a first down. And our first look at Manti Teo, who gets out in coverage and, and covers a lot of ground. And you know, he damaged that foot in the first preseason game and missed basically all of training camp and early in the season. And, you know, the, the coaches of the Chargers are saying he's just now reaching where he should have been at the end of a normal training camp. So they are more than happy with Manti Teo. Third and two. Dolphins looking for a first down. Tannehill going to throw for it. Crossing pattern. That's complete inside the 35 of Brian Hartline for the first down. Well, knowing it and stopping it are two different things. Talk to everybody on San Diego. They go, I, I know when it's clutch time, he's going to 82. And there's Brian Hartline. You know, he's coming all the way across on a crossing formation. And he's kind of got to settle a little bit waiting for that ball. If you notice, he had to put out the flaps for a minute and slow down hey, to wait for that ball. But move the chains, they did. The 34-yard line. Now line of scrimmage down. A new set of downs for Tannehill. This time to give it to Thomas. And Thomas still on his feet. Fights his way close to the 25. A reminder for you, with NFL Mobile, you can get live video access to exclusive premium content on your smartphone. Call Star Star NFL to download or go to NFL.com slash mobile to learn more. Message and data rates 
may apply. Well, that was a good productive run by Miami, who's really out of sync in terms of having any offensive balance. They've got three rushes oh, yeah. and 16 oh, passes. Oh. Second and one. Thick cut, thick cut has the first down and more as he's brought down at about the 15 yard line by Eric Weddle. First down, Char uh, Dolphins. And that's a little creativity by Mike Sherman, the offensive coordinator, trying to eke out any type of a running game whatsoever. You, we saw on the Dolphins' first drive that it was strictly Ryan Tannehill in the passing game. And you know, there, you can pass to set up the run. And maybe that's, uh, maybe Miami has softened them up just enough where they can effectively grind out some yardage running the football. Yeah, tell that to Woody Hayes. No, he would not understand. This is Thomas left side running room inside the 10, spinning to about the seven yard line. Greg, this is a team that had two two yards rushing last week in that loss to Tampa Bay. They have done an exceptional job on first down today. And look at the size of that hole inside. <laughs> and keep in mind, you're right, this is a line that is missing all sorts of starters and unexpectedly missing Mike Pouncey. They anchored at the center position, and they didn't know till this morning that he wasn't going to play. Second and one. Oh, I think John Jerry, the right guard, might have might have got a little bit of a head start. Number 74 off and five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Boy, he's, he is so fired up trying to get out there, but he just he here he is right here. He just gonna just a fraction of a second. He lifts up that hand and tries to get. Momentum moving forward. Second false start call of the day on Jerry. You know, normally an offensive lineman, a false start, you think you're on the road, you can't hear the quarterback signal. Trust me, no one on the Miami offense is having any trouble hearing Ryan Tannehill. On second and six, Tannehill. Good time, going, complete, front line, spinning, lost the football at the goal line. Sharice Wright covered it. Eric Weddle was the DB who got beat initially by Hartline. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 94. Well, forget that. Automatic first down. They're calling Corey Legit number 94 for roughing Ryan Tannehill. Boom, there it is right there. Well, he took he took two full steps. Watch this. Now, well, that's just, that's inexcusable. What could he possibly have been thinking to take two full strides to a quarterback who's already thrown the football and then act afterwards like, oh, I really didn't mean to do that. So instead of San Diego being able to stop this drive and go the other way, it's now a first and goal for Miami at the Chargers six. And Legion much talked about this week because he's the guy that hit Peyton Manning last week, a legal hit. But it was much go, discussed. Go. Thomas. Thomas pushing and is down at the one. Eric Weddle again comes out of there with the football, but He's down by contact. Second down. They are hitting hard at the line of scrimmage. Listen. Go. I think you could see that Daniel Thomas's knees appeared to be on the ground while he still had that football. Meanwhile, Eric Little leading the league in fumble recoveries that don't count. <laughs> Second and goal. <laughs> what page of the rule book of the score manual do I find that baby? Huh? <laughs> Tannehill calls timeout. 9.48 to play here in the first half. And a 7 to 3 San Diego lead. Reminder Tuesday on CBS, a hero makes the ultimate sacrifice in the episode, a person of interest you cannot miss. Tuesday at 10 9 Central, only CBS. Well, this has been impressive the last half dozen plays or so on how effectively Miami has run the football. I know as an offensive coordinator, when you're 
when you're feeling it, when you know your guys are owning the line of scrimmage, you don't want to go away from it. Dan, this has been a... Take a look one more time. Eric Whittle comes away with he, the football. He reaches in and pulls it away, but pretty apparent to me that his knees were down. Second and goal. Go, go. Daniel Thomas leaping for the touchdown. And that's a good job staying with the running game. Talk about making a group of guys up front feel good about themselves. That has to be this patchwork Miami offensive line right now. And Daniel Thomas goes up and over. His third rushing touchdown of the season. And Sturgis to add the extra point. 43 to play first half the Dolphins come back and on the Daniel Thomas leap into the end zone grab a 10-7 lead nice panoramic view here in South Florida Daniel Thomas scores on the one yard leap nine plays 80 yards in just over five and a half minutes and the Dolphins reclaim the lead at 10 to 7 Ronnie Brown, Danny Woodhead deep for San Diego. And this will not be returned by Woodhead. So it'll come out to the 20-yard line, and that's where Phillip Rivers and the San Diego offense will get started. They're down three. We're coming back after this. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. State Farm. It pays to dabble check. Talk to your agent today. And by Bose, the official home audio sponsor of the NFL. Welcome back, everyone. Dan, I know you were anxious, as was I, to see how the Miami Dolphins would come out here. And to, to, to their credit, to a man, they say that all of the turmoil in the locker room hasn't affected them. But I think you and I are in agreement. How could it not? Well, that's exactly right. You, They're saying all the right things. And that's right. To a man, that's what they said. But we, you go, that's that. can that be humanly possible to actually separate yourself from this maelstrom that's taking place all around them but they look focused right now and they look energetic and they're playing hard on first down from the 20 yard line this is matthews going to try the right side and not going to get very much it has been a busy week hasn't it been well you can see on wednesday stephen ross wanted to meet with jonathan martin the nfl said why don't you wait until our investigator meets with him Richie Incognito files a grievance through the Players Association. Ben Martin and Friday was in Manhattan where he met with Ted Wells, the NFL investigator. And there, Ted Wells has said that he's going to come to South Florida and he's going to spend this week at the Dolphins Complex. Not just talking to players, but he's going to talk to administrators, coaches, everybody. Everyone he thinks has got something to offer. On second down and 10. The give is to Woodhead, and Woodhead across the 25 to the 26-yard line. We had a chance to uh, have a exchange a few words yesterday morning with the owner, Stephen Ross, who, who remains very confident that this is going to be resolved to their satisfaction. Well, because he's, he is, you know, absolutely committed to doing the right thing. He's not happy. He can't believe this has happened to his franchise. He's got a lot of money invested in this club, and it's an asset that he's going to protect. And uh, Stephen Ross is, is going to see the bottom of this one way or the other. Meanwhile, third and four, Rivers running out of time, gets the snap off. Standing in, on the move now, and he's going to run for the first down and slide down at about the 32-yard line. Well, Philip Rivers slides to the point where he knows he's moved the sticks, and then it is, I am going down, because this is not Robert Griffin. 
<laughs> he's he's covering some ground, but he knew exactly where he had to go down, and he's not interested in getting any more distance than that. He didn't even have anybody coming. He just wanted to move the stick. That is not where Philip Rivers is comfortable. Well, that ball That's either it. got tipped or slipped out of his hand, one or the other. You know, I got a kick out of talking with Philip Rivers, and he he's so excited about running this no-huddle offense, and it's like he's just beginning to have the fun that he sees guys like Peyton Manning are having these days. Well, he gets some control. And he Tom gets, Brady. Yeah, he gets to change up the play. He gets to call his own every now and then. He really feels like he's a much bigger part of it. That, it is every quarterback's dream. Second and ten, and we give us to Woodhead. And not much there for Woodhead. A Thursday on CBS. Sherlock Holmes is on the case. See why critics say elementary is so good, it's great. Thursday at 10, 9 Central, only CBS. Well, now in a third and long situation, here's where Cameron Wake and these Dolphins really shine. The receivers at the bottom of your screen. Third and eight. Rivers lets it go and it's incomplete. Pretty good coverage in the secondary. Attempted for Keenan Allen and Dimitri Patterson was with it. Well, Phillip felt his pocket falling apart in front of him and he threw that baby off the off his back heels as he was vacating the area. That, I think that was as much a throwaway as anything else. Big Ben. Bear catch ball four and made it his own 17 yard line. Just under six and a half minutes to play in the first half. It's a three point game and the Dolphins are on top. As you well know, the Philippines have been devastated by Typhoon Haiyan. Thousands have lost their lives, and there's been massive property damage. The victims urgently need your help. Please visit redcross.org to make a donation. CBS cares. You just can't imagine what it must be like when there's nothing no. left. Nothing. Go, go. From the 17-yard line, this is Thomas. You know, Dan, looking back at this, this this Dolphins performance so far, how much merit do you give, and, and you can't blame them if they've adopted this attitude, and us against the world attitude? Oh, I think it's very powerful. I've been in a lot of locker rooms where it is a powerful tool because it's, it's really real. You realize that no one cares as much about this as do you. And, and that can be a very large motivator. Complete to Charles Clay and Clay out of bounds, and that's a Miami first down. Tannehill having himself a good outing so far. Well, the Dolphins started out not running the football. They threw the ball a lot on the first uh, series, especially involving Mike Wallace. They got him involved early, and then Ryan Tannehill got fooled by the San Diego coverage. Johnny Patrick came out with the interception, and here they go to Charles Clay, who again. Looks more like a fullback, but he catches like a wide receiver. We have an injured player down on the field, and that's Johnny Patrick on the near sideline. So we'll take a break and come back. 5.52 on the clock for the first half. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Jared the Galleria of Jewelry with five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores. And by McDonald's. I'm loving it. A look inside the Cuban restaurant Versailles here in Miami as we welcome you back. Wish they were catering after. On the first town. Tannehill on the move again. And he's going to run. Whoa, did he take a hit? At the 37, 38 yard line. Boy, he bounces right back up. Sharice Wright was right in the middle of that. 
No hook slide for Tannehill. And Sharice Wright comes right across his bow. And luckily, Tannehill was able to arrest his forward momentum just enough to have it be more of a grazing hit than a, a pile driver. Going into this series, Dan, the Dolphins have been averaging seven and a half yards on first down. Look out, Tannehill going down. And he is whistled down at the 32-yard line. Well, Eric Weddle comes on a blitz off the corner. And even though it's to Tannehill's backside, right, right there at the top of your screen, Tannehill sees him, tries to get out, and just goes down. And for the 38th yeah. time this year, the most in the NFL, Tannehill is sacked. Well, and, and you know, sometimes you got to give the defense credit. And John Pagano just, he sent Weddle, and there was absolutely, the Dolphins didn't have an answer. 30 12 now. Tannehill flips it, and out of the backfield is Daniel Thomas, and Thomas out to about the 33 yard line. That'll be well short of a first down. Well, plenty of time now for Phillip Rivers. Dan, what would you say? What would you say to, you know, the, the fact that there have been so many changes on the offensive line for the Dolphin? Would you maybe expect the Chargers to just blitz every chance they had? Well, and if, if they were, I would be expecting it off the edges. I, I would right up the middle. Out in San Diego. First team timeout, a 30-second timeout. So San Diego going to buy themselves a little time, uses a timeout, and stops the clock with 3.54 remaining well, and I don't here in think, the first half. I don't think their head coach is very happy about them wasting a timeout uh, before an obvious punt. You're, you're going to try to put together a drive to score some points to end this second quarter, and, and burning a timeout right there was not what Mike McCoy had in mind. Boy, sitting and talking That's, with Mike McCoy yesterday, this man has some definitive ideas and plans for this football team, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And, you know, he's young. He's only 41 years old. But he uh, he's ready for this job. He was prepared. I thought it was really interesting. You know, he was the offensive coordinator in Denver. And he, he said something that, you know, coaches, not every day you hear a guy say, I said, Peyton Manning made me a better coach. That's some real humility, isn't it? Made a lot of people a better coach. Just, they don't all say it. Keenan Allen spins away from a tackler. 25, 30. Still on his feet. And out across the 40-yard line. That's a terrific return by the rookie out of California. 3.39 to play. Good field position for Rivers and the Chargers when we come back. Well, you see what that touchdown pass meant from Rivers to Gates earlier in the game. And there's no one. We talked to Phillip Rivers yesterday. Nobody happier than Antonio Gates is healthy than Phillip Rivers. Went right. And he said, you know what? It, it, it became such a burden watching him at the end of practices limp off the practice field. Antonio has had chronic foot problems over the years, and he's as healthy as he's ever been. He's getting good quality practices, and his production on the field shows it. Rivers wide open and dropping the ball at the 45-yard line is Antonio Gates. We have penalty marker. And a little pushing and shoving in the backfield. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face, number 90 of the defense. Five-yard penalty automatic, first down. Well, that penalty is going to move San Diego into a whole lot better field position. I think it was against the San Diego offensive lineman was D.J. Fluker, who had uh, the beneficiary of getting... Some illegal hands run up underneath his face mask. I think Pete Morelli meant number 50, Olivier Vernon. Well, there is no number 90 that I can find. Hence the reason for my deductive reasoning. Yeah, right. <laughs> First and five. River with time and comes right back to what looks like the very same play. And this time Gates with the catch and looks like he's maybe yanked down by the face mask. Well, Antonio Gates puts a major league stiff arm on Rashad Jones. Now, keep in mind, the offensive player, you're not allowed to grab onto that face mask either. 
Dan, that looked like the exact same play on which Gates dropped the pass. Personal foul, face mask, number 85. Wow. Offense. Pete Morelli. yard penalty. As we roll for the penalty, it'll be a first down. He's calling it on Antonio Gates. And Antonio Gates, you, you can stiff arm, and your stiff arm can make contact in the face mask, but you can't grab onto it, and you can't hold onto it. And they're saying that was the case with Antonio Gates. Although, I give it a few seconds, they both partook. Just that Gates did it first. Well, it's not very often that defensive players get much in the way of protection. And they'll tell you that 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 kind of a call is, is overdue. Welcome and welcome. Yeah. Yellow. So it's a first and ten now for the Chargers at the Miami 42. Coming up on three minutes to play in the first half. Rivers gives it to Matthews. Matthews running over 35, 30. Puts his head down and pulls his way to about the 27-yard line. Oh, that's the way you love to see a running back finish off the run. Ryan Matthews heads right upfield. And again, Rashad Jones, he's had a couple of tough plays back-to-back. -back. One taking on Antonio Gates, the second one a few minutes later taking on Ryan Matthews. Talk about guys, it's nice to see healthy. Ryan Matthews, who had two broken collarbones last season. Yeah, at least he spread him around, he broke them both. First down, Matthews again. Matthews to about the 20, maybe to the 19-yard line. Chris Clemens there to meet him. And let's see if that's the last play. It appears it will be before the two-minute warning. Philip Rivers taking a walk to the sideline. And the San Diego running game is pounding away at this vaunted run defense of the Dolphins. Pretty darn good average. Two minutes to play in the first half. The Dolphins three-point lead. The Chargers threatening. Coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. J.B., Dan Shannon, Boomer, Coach Bill Cower will have all the scores and highlights coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. We're watching the NFL today. There seems to be an epidemic of tan shoes in that studio today. Rivers coming back this way. The catch is made by John Phillips, a tight end, and he's inside the 10-yard line. Well, that was a good-looking play design, a run formation all the way, multiple tight ends, everybody packed in there, and then a great run fake, and then coming back to the backside. Caught Miami completely unawares, and then a missed tackle by Clemens really sets up this goal-to-go situation. First and goal from the six now. Clock continuing to run, a minute 20 to play in the first half. Up at the five. Well, that time San Diego comes out, shows pass with a three receiver punch formation to the far side, and they run it. And Miami was all over it. You know, this is a there's a lot of talent on the interior of this Miami defensive line. Soleil that we're looking at right there, Randy Stark. Miami, incidentally, has called a timeout here. 111 to play. You know, we said this at the very beginning of the day, Dan. The winner of this game, there's a lot to play for because you, you move up to five and five in a league that has been, when I say mediocre, the records are right or hovering right around the 500. Now. Well, you're still in it. That's the yeah. magical thing about it. The loser of this game is in trouble. The loser of this game is looking at having to run the table to make the playoffs. And that's unlikely. Second and goal. Rivers up the middle and throws it out here. Grabbed by Antonio Gates. Rivers had to be across the he line. He had to be, absolutely. He had to be across. Philip Rivers had, had to cross the line of scrimmage before he threw that ball. Not by more than two or three yards. <laughs> Tremendous job by Gates of going down and catching the ball, but I think that was all for nothing. We have an illegal forward pass, number 17. Quarterback went beyond the line of scrimmage. 
It's a five-yard penalty and lost it down. Third down. What is, what is great about that, Dan, is that Antonio Gates is trying to convince the official that he caught it, and the official is telling him it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. And Phillip was actually in a position where I know he's not a running quarterback, but he could have kept going with that. But I don't think there's any question that when he released that football, he was well beyond the line of scrimmage. Line of scrimmage is outside the five yard line. It's about a foot outside the five, and you can see that by the time the ball leaves his hand, he's clear down at the four. He's taken two full steps yeah. past the line of scrimmage. So now he's looking at a third and goal. And the line of scrimmage well, should be the 10 yard and line. Keep in mind that there's a loss of down right. on that penalty as well. He's telling the, the chain gang on the sideline to reset the down marker. They had it on. They still have it at the second down. No, it's third and goal. Now we will review the previous play. We will review the previous play. Well, it's inside two minutes, so this is a booth review. The replay assistant upstairs says, well, let's take a closer look at this. Which you could understand if it was close. Well, it, you know, he starts the motion, but where, when the ball leaves his hand, which is, I, I just, to me, it's open and shut that he's beyond or inside the five yard line. Granted, he's going to start to throw, but. When that ball leaves his hand, it's he is inside the five. All of him is inside the five yard line. Now, I, I know that when the rule is that all of you, you know, it, I, I just think that it's, I don't think there's any question that every part of Phillip Rivers is inside the five yard line when the ball leaves his hand. I may have had a few drops of sweat that were still behind the line of scrimmage. If part of Philip Rivers is behind the line of scrimmage, he gets the benefit of the doubt. But I don't think there's any question that in his entirety that he has passed the line of scrimmage before he threw the football. Here comes Pete Morelli. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stand is confirmed. Third down. So, loss of down. The line of scrimmage will now be just inside the 10-yard line, and it's third and goal. It is third and goal. That's exactly right. Good stand at the last minute by the Dolphins defensively, and they're not kidding around. They're showing pressure. They're filling every gap, and an unblocked Chris Clemens gets a hand on this football, and Rivers had no chance whatsoever. You know you got nothing but man coverage back in the end zone, but you know you only got a second and a half to get rid of the ball. So Nick Novak from 27 yards out for the tie. It is perfect. 54 seconds to play. We're tied at 10. Recap time, Dana. Well, we're tied at 10 here as we approach the end of the first half. 
Phillip Rivers. He tries to throw downfield. He's intercepted by Crime. But Tannehill, he's intercepted by Johnny Patrick. Then Phillip Rivers comes back. He finds it all alone. Antonio Gates in the end zone. And then Miami counters with a rushing touchdown. Daniel Thomas goes up and over the San Diego defense. And there was a wonderful scoring opportunity there. Phillip Rivers actually throws a touchdown pass to Antonio Gates, which is negated because Rivers crossed the line of scrimmage before he threw the ball. And that's that's going to be a play that's going to haunt Phillip Rivers because he's, A, he's going to say, I should have just kept the football and tried to run it into the end zone. Or secondly, why didn't, why didn't I let it go just a, a hair sooner? And as you said, he had a chance to run that in. Well, you can see right there that the Dolphins are no strangers to tacking on some points before halftime expires. They got 54 seconds and a pair of timeouts. Oh, excuse me, only one timeout left. Marcus Thickpen, he looks like they run this one out of the end zone for about three or four yards deep. Running room on the right side, he got tripped up as he reached the 20 yard line. Hey, coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. J.B. Dan Shannon Moomer, Coach Cower, you know they'll be updating that playoff picture with scores and highlights coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. We know right now San Diego in their defensive huddle is going find number 11 and double him. That, that, is, that is going to happen. You're not going to allow Mike Wallace to get over the top. If you do, shame on you. Miami has one timeout remaining. You can see the double team already being set up on Wallace here at the bottom. Taylor Hill as he released the ball and that ball is complete. It'll be second and ten. Ryan Tannehill, there's the block right at the line of scrimmage. Hard to see exactly who got a who got a handle. Might have been Kendall oh, yeah. Reyes. Second and ten. Side of the field, and that catch is made, and Hartline is out of bounds for a first down at the 31. Now, when you see Brian Tannehill execute a throw like that, you you see why he was drafted in the first round, and you can see what the Dolphins coaches see. The good Ryan Tannehill can deliver a pinpoint yeah. out like that that is a laser. 36. thrown away as he was under pressure in the, uh, in yeah, the pocket. That is just a complete throw away. Thomas Kaiser, number 90, breaks down the integrity of that pocket, and then those are the tough ones because no way can you step into a throw when the pressure is coming right up the A-gap, right into your chest. Mike Wallace, uh, again, split down to the bottom down here. Second and ten. Deep drop under pressure, and he's going down inside the 20-yard line. That is Thomas Kaiser once again. And right now, this is a, this is a situation now where San Diego's going to get the ball back. Here he is right up here at the top of your screen working against Brian McKinney, and McKinney gives him a soft edge. McKinney has got to strike him. He has got to reroute him, knock him upfield. You can't give him that soft corner. And San Diego uses its second timeout to stop the clock with 24 seconds to play. Because if they can get a decent punt return in some sort of field position, with a guy like Phillip Rivers, you scratch and claw. Robbie. Fight for a chance at a long field goal. Tannehill looking now at a third and 21. Needs the 41-yard line for a first down. Wow, 
Well, certainly San Diego was in the neutral zone. Were they drawn off? Was there a false start that that started it? Multiple chargers jumped. Multiple players. You ever been one of these extended conversations, Dan, where they're just trying to figure out who to blame? Well, I, they're, they're trying to see how many Neutral fouls. zone infraction, number 90 defense. Five-yard penalty remains, third down. That's Kaiser. That's Kaiser who just had the sack. Again, he's up there at the top, and then, you know, right at the bottom. Reggie Walker was Reggie, in there, too. Yeah, he's all the way across the line of scrimmage. It's still third and very long for Sandy uh, for uh, the Dolphins at third and 16. Hey, this is Miller. And Miller right up the middle and the Chargers are letting this clock run. And that was a smart play by Miami to run the football. If they'd have thrown another incomplete pass and stopped the clock, that was really going to help out San Diego. As it is, they will let this clock run out. And I they'll go been, to the locker room. I would have taken a timeout. I would have taken. And rushed the punter and tried to get a block and for a touchdown. Not, never leave a play on the field. End of the first half, 10-10 tie. We're back with the Verizon Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Set for the start of the second half, our halftime score: Miami 10 and San Diego 10. And we'll take a look at the first half performance presented by Intel. It was uh, Daniel Thomas with the leap from one yard out. It was a uh, pretty even first half by all accounts. Greg Gumble along with Dan Deardorf. It's uh, it's kind of nice when coaches can go to the locker room. Both guys go to the locker room and they say, "We have a chance to win this game." Well, it these look you know looks like a pair of teams with identical records at four and five. Uh, you brought it up in the first half, Greg. I think the biggest question surrounding this game going in was how focused were the Miami Dolphins going to be? Because let's face it, there's no manual to study what they've been going through for the last two weeks. It's really unprecedented from a team standpoint and I've got to give them a lot of credit they appear to be focused they appear to be really into it they're playing the game with a lot of intensity and I applaud them for it now once they've done that in the first half you expect that to carry through oh yeah I would yes because I think if that if the preparation wasn't there if the focus wasn't there that would have reared its ugly head in the first half all right the uh Chargers will get their hands on the football first here in the second half Ronnie Brown and Danny Woodhead are deep for the kick and this looks returnable by Woodhead. That's dragged down short of the 20-yard line. We look at the halftime numbers. Dan, I said it was a pretty even first half, and those numbers pretty much bears it out. Well, and the one thing that's uh, kind of surprising is that the Dolphins, even though they've only rushed the ball for 48 yards, you know, are, ru are rushing it for a decent average. They're, they're averaging nearly five yards a carry. Now, on the other hand, the Chargers are really running the ball effectively. Uh, they're almost six yards a carry. So, but the, you know, the Chargers have been a better rushing team than the Dolphins. Uh, last couple of weeks, the Dolphins have struggled. And why wouldn't they? They're missing a whole bunch of offensive line. Mike Pouncey added to that list today. They're starting center. Hit almost immediately by Paul Soliai, and he got it out to the 20-yard line for a gain of one. You know, and running the football against this Miami defense was, you know, something that is supposed to be really hard to do. They've got a lot of quality linemen. They've got, uh, they picked up a couple valuable free agents, uh, Danell Ellerby to man things in the middle. But in the run game, you kind of get the impression that they missed Carlos Dansby and Kevin Burnett, a couple linebackers that were here a year ago. Now, 
taken their game elsewhere. We are told by the Chargers that Dimitri Patterson has re-aggravated a groin injury and will return as questionable today. Meanwhile, Rivers throwing, and that is oh, caught across the 35-yard line. Keenan Allen, and that shows you what he's capable of. I think the thing we heard most about him was he will compete for the football, Dan. Well, and he's sure-handed. That's, you know, during training camp, he had some issues with drops, and, you know, the coaching staff had to get stern with him and say, look, you're not going to play unless you get this squared away. And guess what? He's only been credited with two drops this entire season. And he has been a most pleasant addition to this San Diego passing game. down the sideline for Keenan Allen. Allen was a third round draft pick and told us that uh, yeah, he's pretty sure teams didn't want to take a chance on him earlier in the draft because of a knee issue that he had at Cal. Yeah, he injured his knee towards the end of his junior season, which was last year. He came out after his junior se season. Said that, then I went to the combine and of course I wasn't completely healed and I ran a slow 40 at the combine. So it was a combination of events and you hate to see a first rounder or a second rounder drop to the Barney. third rounder, but the Chargers are they're most happy it happened because he fell into their lap. Give him credit for going with him. He's, he's here to stay. He has that first catch for 17 yards today. Meanwhile, Rivers over the middle and wobbling its way over Gates's head incomplete. Well, Philip Rivers was getting pressured from behind. I don't know if that affected the delivery of this ball, but Gates is open. Gates is Gates is in a position you see coming in from the backside and just kind of had to pick up his foot. It really did not affect the throw. I just think that was a bit inaccurate from Rivers. So third and ten. Yeah, that that should have been an easier pitch and catch to Gates. is Allen and Allen across midfield into Miami territory for a first down. Well, Philip Rivers buying himself a little extra time. Just a straight four man rush. But Philip stands in there and again, I think he was a little surprised to find him find Allen so wide open going against this Miami zone, which the shell had dropped way too deep. This is Matthew. Not much there. Allen, two catches for 32 yards today. We have a penalty marker down. Yeah, this flag came in from the near sideline. Holding. Number 66 offense. Ten-yard penalty remains. First down. That's Jeremy Clary, who started at right tackle today, moving from right guard. But the first six years of his NFL career, he was a right tackle. Right. So it's an easy transition for Clary to slide back out to that right tackle spot. This is all because of King Dunlap, the normal starting left tackle, has got a neck injury or a concussion. It's unclear which of the two is keeping him out, but D.J. Fluker, the normal right tackle, the talented rookie from Alabama, he's overplaying Dunlap's spot on the left. And Rich Ornberger is in there at center right now for San Diego. River, that's complete. And that's Keenan Allen once again, who is uh, suddenly on the radar for the Chargers quarterback. All right, let's check the integrity of this pocket for Phillip Rivers. That's the way you love to see your quarterback be able to step up into the throw unchallenged. And we and, had uh, another flag on the field. Taunting, number 13, offense, 15-yard penalty, and the down counts. Second down. Uh, Keenan Allen got up yapping. Well, it's a dead ball foul, and yes, there it is. He just gets right up into the grill of Jimmy Wilson. And Keenan Allen, I told you just earlier this drive that he's been spoken to on multiple occasions about his brashness and some of his flaws by the San Diego coaching staff. 
So now it's second and 22. to Matthews, and Matthews couldn't get a jump start past the line of scrimmage. You know, the one thing about Keenan Allen, we saw him with that penalty. Yeah, you, you get angry with a guy, but, you know, when we talked to Coach McCoy about it, Greg, it was pretty obvious he likes the kid, yeah. and he likes that fire, and he likes the fact that he's got some spunk, and he's not afraid to... He's just trying to find a way to keep it in check. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's got to be within the boundaries of, of something that doesn't hurt your team. Third and 19. Little pop over the middle to Woodhead. Woodhead to about the 45, close to the 45, and it'll be a fourth down. Deion Jordan with the stop. Well, it's unrealistic to think that you're going to be able to move the chains with a third and forever like that, so what looked like a promising drive for San Diego screeches to a halt. So Mike Cyphers. He's got to feather this back. He could easily plop this into the end zone without much of an effort. Has the best all-time percentage in the NFL for putting a ball inside the 20-yard line. And will they save this one? They will not. Into the end zone for the touchback. In answer to your question, Dan, yes, the moon does come out in Florida. We'll be right back. Who's going to be next to get a leg up? 10-10 tie, 10-19 remaining in the third quarter, and the Dolphins first down at their own 20-yard line. Tannehill has put the ball up 21 times. This is number 22. That's complete to Charles Clay. Clay picks up about seven and that'll bring up a second and three Manti Teo and Sharice Wright in on the stop Charles Clay has become such a valuable part of this Miami offense that's nothing more than a relief valve after clearing routes have been run by Mike Wallace and the other receivers to that side that's that's easy pickings out there because you know Wallace is going to take two defenders with him easy 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 House 56, House 56. Leo 56. House 56. Rip, rip, rip. Rip, rip. Tannehill and Clay once again. Clay with a first down. 32 out to the 34 yard line. As we dip under nine and a half to play in the third quarter, we'll tell you tonight. On 60 Minutes, the wealthiest Americans are giving away their fortunes. Who will be helped? Hear from billionaires including Bill Gates and Warren Buffett tonight on 60 Minutes only CBS. Dan, dial up Warren Buffett for me, would you please? Well, we've got a guy right here in this stadium who's done his fair share. Right, Stephen Ross. Yes, he has. Has given, given several hundred million dollars to the University of Michigan. Tannehill. Rolling. Rolling. It is incomplete. Mike Wallace. Double covered down the sideline. You know, a couple plays ago, Dan, we saw Manti Teo make a play. There's Stephen Ross. Uh, we saw Manti Teo. I thought it, that was delightful getting to know that young man yesterday. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? This is, he's, you know, he got hindered so much in training camp, but it's so hard to be a rookie and get hurt at the very beginning of that whole process. It, it's hard to put into words how far back Woody! it puts you. That's but only now, just getting yeah. into playing shape. Tannehill, complete for Miller. Miller running with midfield inside the 45-yard line. And that's something Miami loves to see, Lamar Miller out in, out in space. Because this guy can eat up some ground. Nice little play fake just to set up the screen. He didn't even get a block. Claybo didn't get anybody. John Jerry didn't get anybody. But the defense had sank so much, Miller was gone. Red pop, red pop, 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 pop. Pop, pop. Miller switches sides in the backfield now on first down. Penalty markers. Miller trying to dip to the outside. Can't break free down at about the 38 yard line yeah the second hard count got San Diego off sides I think Corey Legit was one of the guys in the neutral zone offside number 94 defense five yard penalty still first down let's listen to this see if you can stay still go, go. 
I stood perfectly still. <laughs> you have such <laughs> such discipline. Yes, right. Right. Uh, Incidentally, Johnny Patrick, we saw him injured in the first half. He has suffered a hand injury, and his return is doubtful. So both teams now missing a talented corner. Patterson's not coming back for the Dolphins. Tannehill, that's complete. Inside of the 30. Charles Clay, still on his feet. Still on his feet to the end zone. Touchdown, Dolphins. Well, San Diego fans will tell you that we have problems in our secondary. We have a missed tackle that's going to occur right there. That's Teo that doesn't get there. And then we get a complete run over as Clay tramples Marcus Gilchrist on his way to the end zone. So Manti Teo can't catch up, can't make the hit. And this was some drive for Charles Clay. 39 yards on the play. Tannehill's 14th touchdown pass of the season, and the extra point is good. 7.43 to play in the third quarter, and the Dolphins jump back on top. The little screen to Charles Clay pays dividends. It's 17-10, Miami. CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Charles Schwab. And by Ford. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost fuel economy and a whole lot more. Seven forty-three to play in the third quarter. An eighty-yard drive in just over two and a half minutes. And Charles Clay on the receiving end of a thirty-nine-yard touchdown pass from Ryan Tannehill. Danny Woodhead out of the end zone, right up the middle, and out to about the twenty-yard line. We'll take a timeout, and when he takes the field now, Philip Rivers looking up at a seven-point deficit. Offensive opportunities have been uh, hard to come by for the San Diego Chargers. Just five possessions so far today. Well, no three and outs. They've moved the chains a couple of times on all those grounds. First down now for the 20, and Rivers to throw over the middle. He's got his man Gates, and Gates has a first down across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. There's Nolan Carroll. He is playing cornerback for the Miami Dolphins in place of the injured Dimitri Patterson. Well, Nolan Carroll is no stranger to the field. He's played a lot of football for the Dolphins. The pitch for Matthew. Matthew trying to turn the corner, cuts it back. And out close to the 40-yard line. Let's get an NFL Today update. JB, take it away. Baltimore forcing OT. Yeah, first and goal to two. They couldn't do anything with three plays. They kicked the field goal, going to overtime. The coin toss. Baltimore is taking the ball, going against the wind. We will keep you updated on that one. Back to Greg and Dan. All right, guys, thank you very much. All right, so Baltimore and Chicago in, uh, in overtime? Weather problems. Hell yeah. Almost a two-hour weather delay. So they don't have enough delay with the weather. Now they're going to OT. Second and three. River. With time. And throwing out to the near side. That's complete to Green. Ladarius Green. And he's out close to midfield for another Chargers first down. Again, another one of the tight ends. Uh, boy, if you're going to learn how to play tight end, what about having a guy like Antonio Gates to, to be your mentor and your, your, the guy you study? Good news for the Chargers, by the way, is that Nick Hardwick is back at the center position. He's been bothered by a neck issue, and he was out for a couple series. Ornberger play, but they're a better football team than 61 on the field. River. Sideline. Complete. Eddie Royal. And Eddie Royal makes his presence known for the first time today. And Eddie Royal's been bothered by a, a, a real nagging turf toe injury. 
But look at Philip Rivers. I'm, I'm telling you, Eddie Royal might have been the fourth guy that he looked at. You could see him start on the left, work the couple guys over there, come to the middle, work the middle. He had so much time. He finally found Eddie Royal. So the Chargers have moved now to the Miami 35. And off the 20-yard line. Looked like Green, his uh, intended receiver, number 89. Well, he would have liked to have thrown it to Green, but Rashad Jones had other ideas. He was uh, he was tight with his coverage. Second and ten. Ken Wisenhunt calls the plays for the Chargers. Of course, he took the Arizona Cardinals to a Super Bowl. Six years he was a head coach in the desert. Did a good job. He was a good player too, you know that, Greg? Yep. This is Matthew. And Phil, Philip Rivers says he really, really enjoys communicating with Wiz. Well, yeah, because he, you know, he says he's real flexible. And you know, if Philip was kind of saying this in a you know, who wouldn't feel good about this? But he goes, you know, he values my opinion. He knows I've been in the league for 10 years, and I've figured a few things out. And he goes, it's it's really cool to have a coach that thinks, hey, you know what? Maybe I've got a little something that I I could add to this partnership. Yeah, Philip says, Philip says, I throw this out. And he goes, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. He goes, wow. I like that. 37. I said, just don't play Wizard Hunt in golf. He is a scratch player. Rivers over the middle, diving and incomplete inside the 20-yard line. Eddie Royal. Well, you can't say Eddie Royal didn't go after that football. You hear the phrase, a receiver competes for the ball. Eddie Royal lays out for that and exposes himself to the chance of really getting a big hit. Tremendous effort by Eddie Royal, but the ball just a little too far away. So now Nick Novak will line up this 50-yarder. His season high, long rather, is a 50-yarder. And we're not in Denver. This is sea level. This one looks pretty good. It is good. That would have been good for close to 60. Three on the board, 17-13. <laughs> the NFL on CBS is sponsored by the new Intel-powered 2-in-1s. Intel, look inside. And by Walmart. Walmart's got the season's hottest gifts at everyday low prices. Come in and see for yourself. Hey, welcome back, everyone. A reminder, today is a salute to service game. For every point scored, the NFL donates $100 to each of its core military nonprofit partners. We'll tell you more about that as we go along. Pretty pictures, huh, Dan? Beautiful. I mean, look, elsewhere this, in the country, it's snowing, you know? Well, it, it's, Greg, you don't have to rub it in. Four minutes to play not, here in the third. Not everyone lives the dream like you do down here. Oh. Marcus Big Ben D. And Big Ben will not run it out. And I was talking about the salute to service game. That's what this is. Donations to each of the NFL's core military nonprofit partners, the USO, Wounded Warrior Project, and the Pat Tillman Foundation. And all games include a number of in-stadium camouflage colored items and 100 local military personnel form the player introduction line for the Dolphins to run through before the game here today. If you haven't stopped a, a man or a woman in service and said thank you, try it. You'll be surprised how good it makes you feel. One first down to give us to Thomas, and Thomas with running room across the 30, 32-yard line and a first down. And again, after their problems last week and with all the shuffling on their offensive line and no Mike Pouncey, you were wondering whether the Dolphins were going to be able to mount anything that even resembled a 
serviceable running game today, and they actually have done far more than that. And, you know, looking, at that, looking at that first down run, Dan, you, you can't blame the Chargers for getting up there and thinking, Santa Hill's going to throw once again. Well, that's the way he started the game, and I think he loosened them up by throwing the ball so often early. Back to throw now. Under pressure, going to go down at about the 23-yard line. Sean Lismore with his second sack of the season. And again, I'm, I'm surprised that Ryan Tannehill hasn't found himself in this position more often. And you can see right there that Lismore gets inside Sam Brenner, the practice squad player, who really has never been on an NFL field in a real game before until today when he started at left guard. And it's a line that's yes. missing incognito and Martin Red and Joey, today Red Mike Pouncey. Red Joey, Red Joey. Red Joey, Red Joey. Second and 16. Thomas, nowhere to go. Wrapped up before he reached the 30-yard line by Lawrence Guy, number 71. Now, Greg, this line was aided by the fact that they were able to make a trade with Baltimore to get Bryant McKinney in here to kind of solidify the left tackle spot. He's a rather large human being. Uh, he is a giant man, 6'8", 352. Got a Super Bowl ring that he won last year with the Ravens, and today's his fourth start. He likes Miami, though. It's where he went to college. Setting up the screen for Miller. Can't get away at the 27-yard line. Well, Donald Butler wrapped him up and held him there long enough and waited for the cavalry to arrive. So now the Dolphins will look to Brandon Fields to kick them out of trouble. Looks like Thomas Kaiser is uh, waving off medical attention, but the, the doctor thinks he, he needs a look. Boy, linebacker is one place the Chargers don't want to hear about any injuries. No. Keenan Allen is deep. That's a really good kick from field. Back in his own 20 yard line. Allen with room to run. 25. 30 and across the 30 to about the 33 yard line. 122 to play in the third. Four point lead for Miami. You look at Dean Spanos, the uh, president, chairman of the board of the San Diego Chargers. This is Ryan Matthews and Matthews breaking free up the sideline. 30, 20, and brought down out of bounds inside. Rashad Jones finally chased him down. They're going to mark him out at the 16-yard line. Well, once again, let's try to hammer it in here behind DJ Fluker. And you can see that the Dolphins didn't have a second level to their defense. The linebackers were all up filling gaps at the line of scrimmage. Once Ryan Matthews got first that first line, only the safeties were between he and the goal line. Danny Woodhead in the backfield, first down, 51 yards. That's a career long for Matthew. This is Woodhead, maybe a yard. It'll be second and nine, and we're in the last 40 seconds of the third quarter. Well, you can save that big run if you're the Miami defense by stiffening here. And it's, it's really discouraging on a defense when they give up a big run like that. But you can save it. And that's what Joe Philbin is telling him right now. You can save it if you'll muscle up right here and force San Diego to kick a field goal. On second and nine, Rivers. Little flip to the far side. That's Green. And Green is wrapped up at about the 13-yard line. That's Philip Wheeler who got out there and sniffed out that screen and played it beautifully and that is the end of the third quarter with our score 17 13 miami in the lead but for how long we're back after this message and a word from your local station well for the first time this season the miami dolphins have allowed a hundred yard rusher in a game and it's ryan matthews who's up to 120 as we welcome you back for the start of the fourth quarter our well, producer mark wolf and our director Suzanne Smith, Greg Gumbel, Dan Deardorff, yes. Well, Matthews got him here. He got him in this position, but now he's over on the sideline. And the ex-Miami Dolphin, Ronnie Brown, is in the backfield with Phillip Rivers. Third and five from the 11. 
Rivers. Quick pass, almost intercepted. Nolan Carroll had a chance to pick it off. Well, I think he's trying to go to Keenan Allen, who is really open. But it's just a somehow the timing between the two of them is way off. And I'm not, you, you don't know if Rivers just didn't throw it very well or if the route from Allen was not what he was expecting, but the quick slant was there. And that was just a plain misfire. 29 yard attempt upcoming now from Nick Novak. And the Chargers are within one. Plenty of time remaining here in the fourth. Miami's lead is 17 16. Watching the NFL on CBS. Beautiful sights today and this evening, courtesy of MetLife, providing our aerial coverage today. Thank you, folks. 14.52 to play. In the fourth quarter, Miami 17, the Chargers 16. And Marcus Thigpen awaits the kick. And this one, he should be able to return. From the two. Hole up the middle, across the 25. To about the 26-yard line. Well, we were wondering what happened between Rivers and Keenan Allen. Here's Allen right here. Watch him on his release as he slips and falls. Right there. He goes down. And that's why he was not. Philip Rivers was throwing to the spot, and because of the slip, Keenan Allen wasn't there. All right, so let's see what Ryan Tannehill has in mind here. They've shown they can throw the ball on occasion, and they've shown they can run it too. Well, yeah, their running game has been a very pleasant surprise. From the 26, Tannehill to throw, far sideline, and juggled it out of bounds. Park line incomplete. Now uh, that's a rare misfire between those two. Brian Hartline normally a lot more sure-handed than that. Meanwhile, that game is over at Soldier Field in Chicago. The Bears in overtime. Boy, they both teams battle the elements today. Just ending in overtime, and the Ravens on the short end of a 23-20 score. Yeah, and the defending champs fall to four and six. Hey, what do you think? To about the 34. Let's update the AFC playoff picture now. Kansas City, New England, Indy, and Cincy, the division leaders. Denver in the hunt. The Jets, despite losing today and losing badly at Philadelphia. But check this out. One of these two teams yep. is going to end up 5-5, five and five, which puts you right over here in this category of being right in there, right in the middle of it. Puts you in the conversation, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Third and two. Miller in the backfield. Tannehill. Tip incomplete. Nicely done by Richard Marshall, number 31, on defense, covering Richard Matthews. By right, one mistake can derail a whole drive, can it? You just wonder where this drive ends up if Brian Hartline is able to hold on to that first down pass. That would have moved the sticks, and all of a sudden, Miami's got some offensive momentum. How quickly it dissipates. Now, once again, Keenan Allen is deep for the upcoming kick from Brandon Fields. He had a good punt return last time. Right up the middle. Another good kick from Fields. Fair catch ball for and made by Allen at about the 17-yard line. 13.48 to play. 17.16 Miami. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Chase Freedom. Get your cash back. And by Verizon. Never be without football with NFL Mobile from Verizon. 
back in Miami. Dolphins by one, 17-16. A reminder coming up time permitting the Subway postgame show. J.B., Dan Shannon, Boomer, Coach Bill Cower will have all the scores and all the highlights coming up on the Subway postgame show. Rivers and the Chargers at their own 17-yard line. They busted Ryan Matthews loose on their last possession. Matthews for about three. Let's get you back to New York for an update once again. JB, Coach Bill Cowell. Here's how Chicago improved to six and four. After Josh McCown hits Mattel's pen with a big pass, Robbie Gold, 38 yards out, and the Chicago Bears beat the Baltimore Ravens in overtime. Tied six and four. Tied with Detroit at the top of the NFC North. Coach back to Greg Gumbel and Dan Deardorff. You know, what an interesting day that had to be for field goal kickers in oh. Chicago today, huh? How about the fans? Putting up with that long of a weather delay, you know they're soaked and wind blown. On second and six, Matthews again, and he's going nowhere. Cameron Wake with the stop. Well, talk about penetration. At the, Jared Odrick got it started, number 98. His penetration forces Matthews to the outside to begin with, right there on the left. And then once Matthews is going parallel to the line, easy pickets for Cameron Wake. Man, that was, there was a plethora of missed blocks at the point of attack. Yeah, keep in mind, the Miami Dolphins offensive line is not the only makeshift line in the stadium today. Third and 11. Rivers pulls it down, and he goes down at the 10-yard line. Philip Rivers was fortunate to maintain control of that football. Looked like Wake and maybe Odrick too. Cameron Wake's coming in on the right tackle, Clary, and he runs Clary back into him, but then flashing across from the other side is Odrick. And, you know, just very quietly, quietly Jared Odrick is having a heck of a year. Kicking out of his own end zone now is Cyphers. Big pen. Their catch called and made, and that's pretty good field position for the Miami offense. 11:51 to be played here in the fourth quarter. Well, Charles Clay, the tight end for Miami, has had himself a pretty dark, pretty doggone good day so far. Again, he's been doing it on his outlets. He's been going downfield. And then he got in the end zone. And watch this. Wow, just running over safety Marcus Gilchrist. Now that's how you be physical and finish off a run. Clay's got six receptions on the day. 90 yards. This is Daniel Thomas riding the room off the right side. Breaking tackle. And out to about the 48-yard line. Well, I tell you, it's 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 good work at the point of attack, okay? I mean, Thomas, he finds a hole, but then it's a story of missed tackles. Uh, Manti Teo can't bring him down. Uh, Sharice w w Wright just waves at him going by. That wasn't much of an effort. Over, over, over. Three, three, three. Second and two. The second level of the San Diego defense has got to start tackling better. Go, go, go. Thomas again. Across midfield for the first down. You know, you were wondering, uh, all of us were wondering if coming into today, especially when we got the news this morning that, that Mike Pouncey wasn't going to be able to play for the Dolphins. He was really the anchor of things at the center position. We were wondering if they were going to be able to run the ball at all. And it has been surprising. Coming off a two-rushing yard night at Tampa Bay. Last week. Thomas again. No. Tannehill keeping it. Looking for the first down marker. Looks like he's pushed out just short of it. They're not getting a whole lot of help from the Chargers. Why is that, dude? Because they don't like him. He's the other team's quarterback. I I'll explain it to you sometime. <laughs> <laughs> It's the way baseball players let the guy fall right. in the dugout. <laughs> watch, watch the Chargers just kind of turn backs and the waves part. Yeah. <laughs> you all right? You okay? Eric Weddle gives him a shove, but he was still in the field to play. 
I mean, you can't just you can't just hit the quarterback with a feather duster. He's he is given a first down at the 39 yard line. Tannehill to throw to the 30. Hart line. Another first down to the 25. And this is how you protect a lead by putting together an offensive drive like this. And again, Derek Cox, the corner driven well off the ball by Hartline. He's given Hartline a lot of respect considering the fact that Brian Hartline isn't a threat to run by anybody. But he's selling it to Derek Cox, so give Hartline a lot of credit. 13 apiece. Yeah. 13 each. It'll be second down. You know, we started this day talking about the throws from from Philip Rivers, but Ryan Tannehill, you've got to like the way he's thrown the ball today. Yeah, hit really. Now that's Nate Garner again, the normal left guard who's subbing for Pouncey at center, and that shotgun snap a little low. Any quarterback will tell you, I'd rather have it low than high. You can go down and get it easier than you could jump up and try to block it. A, sh a shotgun snap is an unnatural thing for a human being. Shoot that ball off someplace you can't see. This is Thomas. Thomas inside the 20 to the 19. And in addition to moving the ball downfield, Miami taking time off the clock. We're approaching nine minutes to play here in the fourth. My, my last year in the league, I played center. I shot one over Neil Lomax's head at RFK against the Redskins. Let me tell you, that's a horrible feeling. When I finally saw it the next day, we watched it. It must have been eight feet over his head. He, he, he turned and ran after the ball. how Neil felt. Third and four. Tannehill, quick pass, and that's batted down on the near side by Eric Weddle. Tried to get it to play. Well, Eric Weddle, a pro bowler a couple of years ago, that's theirs. He's all over this. He makes the break at the same time Charles Clay does. Yeah, he's got his hands on him, but he's not rerouting him. He's not pushing him. He's not moving his upper torso. So on comes Caleb Sturgis to attempt a 37-yard field goal. It's still a, a good drive by Miami if it results in points. Just inside the upright. With three more on the board for the Dolphins as we come up on eight and a half to play here in the fourth quarter. Caleb Sturgis barely got it in. 20 to 16, Miami. San Diego still within shouting distance. Philip Rivers just a couple of moments away from getting his turn on offense once again. It's 20 to 16, Miami. 834 to play in regulation. Brown and Woodhead. And they will not run this one out. And it'll come out to the 20 yard line. That gives us an opportunity to tell you you can get inside the mind of a quarterback. Join Phil Sims, Rich Gannon, Steve Berline, Adam Shine on NFL Monday QB tomorrow, 6:30 Eastern on CBS Sports Network, the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Speaking of quarterbacks, here's what they've done today. Yeah, both of them with a first half interception. Ryan Tannehill and uh, Philip Rivers both have been effective, but Ryan Tannehill having a pretty good day. But it's money time now for Rivers. Can his line keep this Miami pass rush out of his face? Matthew cuts it back. Maybe a yard on the play. Leading the charge is number 79, Derek Shelby. Well, Ryan Matthews at 120 yards on the day. That's a that's a good effort. Of course, aided by 51 of them in one run, but still, it's a good solid day for Ryan Matthews. Second down. Miami showing pressure. 
Here they come. River steps up, delivers the ball over the middle to Green. Green with running room. Green finally falls down at about the 45-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. Well, Ladarius Green this time, A, just runs an escape route, but Antonio Gates is drawing all the attention. And when you're the guy that gets to run underneath Antonio Gates, you're going to be open. And a good job by Rivers of stepping up and able to deliver that ball before he gets dragged to the ground. But Ladarius Green, he gets the chance to run underneath Antonio Gates, and not as much attention lives there. This is Woodhead to about the 41. We're talking with Philip Rivers about the highs and lows that you go through as a quarterback, and the lows was losing a Darren Sproles, and the high was the acquisition of a Danny Woodhead. Absolutely, and Woodhead, such a... Uh, and, and, and Darren Sproles, let's be realistic, he's, he's an extraordinary player, a special player. And while Woodhead doesn't, you know, while he doesn't possess Sproles' game-breaking ability to make something short go for 60 yards, what an outlet, what a blocker, and he's an effective runner between the tackles as well. Matthew. 35 and out of bounds. And right now, you know, San Diego, the, you know, the Ken Wisenhunt and Mike McCoy, they're, they're thinking touchdown. You know, if they got into field goal range in a hurry and they could make this a 20 to 19 game where they were really confident that they'd get another possession with enough time, of course they'd do it. But I think that they're, they're looking at where they are on the field and they're thinking, they're thinking six points that we need to get in the end zone. To about the 32. Now these Chargers have played their share of close games, and although there were a lot of people patting them on the back for losing by only eight to Denver, Mike McCoy wasn't buying it. Well, no. I mean, coaches in this business, there are no style points. There are no attaboys. There's no, oh, you guys look good. No, you either won or you lost. And to try to make your team think that anything other than that matters, you're leading them down the wrong path. Second and eight. Running out of time. Rivers, quick pass to the side. Eddie Royal. And Royal wrestled down just inside the 30-yard line by Donnell Ellerby. And now this brings up a critical third down. Because here at the 30-yard line, you're looking at about a 47 yard field goal if you stalled right here and this will, that would bring up a difficult decision about whether to go for it on fourth down or not Chargers oh. 0 for their last four third down attempts although we saw already that Novak's got plenty of leg Rivers under pressure he goes down you could not take a sack in that situation. Olivier Vernon, number 50. Now you are, by the loss of that yardage, take a look at it. Phillip Rivers just can't find anybody. And Olivier Vernon just collapses DJ Fluker, whose feet slide out from under him. And Vernon, a much smaller man than Fluker, and that took him clear out of field goal range. So they'll try to put the Dolphins back inside the 10 yard line, and it's going to come down inside the, uh, well, it's going to be spotted at the five. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the redesigned Honda Odyssey. Honda, start something special. And by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. Three fifty-eight to play in the fourth quarter, twenty to sixteen, Miami. A reminder once again: time permitting, the Subway post-game show. JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and the coach with scores and highlights on the Subway post-game show. And now the Dolphins start a most important possession. Now you got to commit eight guys to the box, and that's just what the Chargers are doing right here. Tannehill to throw. 
sideline. Park line. First down yardage. Out to cross the 20-yard line. Well, first down yardage, and he stays inbounds. And another San Diego missed tackle. We are seeing a bunch of these. Derek Cox just can't make the tackle on Hartline. And this has not been a good day tackling-wise for the second and third levels of the San Diego defense. Ryan Tannehill burned some time off the clock. Oh, the snap of the ball was about yeah, yeah, that's it. There, there you go. go. Don't, don't snap this with 20 seconds on the play clock. Yeah, there you go. Now he's getting it. Tannehill on the move. And going to stay in bounds as he slides down across the 25 yard line. There's some smart football by Ryan Tannehill. That is smart football. You don't throw it away. That stops the clock. You don't go out of bounds. That stops the clock. And he showed his athletic ability and his intelligence at the same time by sliding in bounds. Man, that was that was well done by number 17. Second the other, and six. The, the other 17. Seven and second and six as we approach two and a half minutes to play. Gonna throw it over the middle. Complete first down. Oh man, you gotta love how aggressive Mike Sherman and we is get a penalty made. marker down. You gotta love the play calling here, though, don't you? They're just not sitting back, handing it off. I think this could be a horse collar, dude. I didn't get a good look at it, but Miami is sure acting like it's on San Diego. There is no foul on the play for a horse collar tackle. Timeout, San Diego. First team timeout. So San Diego uses a timeout to stop the clock. 2.21 to play. Let's take a look at that. Here we are at the very end of it. And no, there was no, no. no. His hand was on top of both shoulder pads, but nothing anywhere near. And Richard Matthews again, after that breakout game last week where he had 11 receptions, has really found a home in the slot. They well, lost Mr. Brandon Gibson, who ends up on IR. And Mr. Tannehill has spread the ball around today. Well, I, you got to give Miami credit for being aggressive. They're trying to. They're trying to protect a four point lead here and they're not doing it the conventional way by just running the football. Although I'll be really surprised if they don't run it here <laughs> on first down. But maybe they'll Miller for a couple to the thirty nine and another timeout is called. Yeah. 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 This is the by way San to go. Diego. No if you're Mike McCoy use them now you still got the two minute warning. But you, you, you can't let them run off 20 seconds at a time, and that's what would happen if he wouldn't have used the one before this. Meanwhile, as Philip Rivers looks on, Ryan Tannehill, 22 of 34 today for 268 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. But you, hey, Greg, put yourself in the shoes of John Pagano now, the San Diego defensive coordinator. There is no way he has a handle on what Mike Sherman's going to call here. You know, the book says, oh, he's going to hand it off again and force us to burn our third time out. But, wow. He was comfortable having That's, Tannehill throw deep in his territory. This has been very aggressive on the part of the Dolphins. It's second and eight. Chargers down to one timeout. Tannehill to throw. Sideline. And it looks like he just missed Hartline. Boy, and that was, that was the right call. It was everything except a completed pass. Looked like Brian Hartline was open. Watch Brian Hartline there at the top again going against Cox. Cox is giving him all sorts of room. That's a uh, that's an easy completion and a misfire from Ryan Tannehill. So now a third and eight. And uh, more importantly San Diego didn't have to use a timeout. Boy, Ryan Tannehill should have just dropped to the ground. If he's gonna, if he's going to get sacked behind a line of scrimmage, at least drop. Take it to the two-minute warning. Yeah. 
So now the Chargers have the two-minute warning plus one more timeout available to them, and now they need a booming kick from Brandon Fields. Eddie Royal is standing back at his own 15-yard line. Fourth, they'll go down as a sack. Fourth sack of the day for Tannehill, which is par for the course for him. You're going to give one of the most explosive quarterbacks in the game a chance. That's a terrific kick for Fields. That's Sends a low screamer all though. the way back to the five. Roy across the field. And doesn't make it to the 20-yard line. He's brought down at about the 16. We get the two-minute warning and a minute 54 to play. The San Diego Chargers trying to stay alive in the wild card race. And so are the Dolphins. see what Philip Rivers can do you see what he has done in fourth quarter and overtime situations he's engineered 18 game-winning drives the Dolphins defense right now wishes wishes there were more people in the stands to make more noise that was a 61 yard punt by Brandon Fields the Chargers start from their own 17 River under pressure so I got rid of it this is Number 86, Vincent Brown. That's a pickup of about five. Monday 40 to play. And against San Diego, obviously they called two plays in the huddle. Anything where Miami can keep them in the field of play and keep that clock grinding. Rivers over the middle, and that is caught by Vincent Brown. And again, Philip Rivers wishes he was playing college football where the clock stopped on a first down. Vincent Brown Not with so. his first two catches of the day. 65 seconds to play. A field goal does the Chargers no good. Rivers throwing far side of the field, and that's complete. And Gates runs out of bounds short of the first down marker at about the 42. Let's update the AFC playoff picture. Kansas City and Denver. Kansas City, New England, Indianapolis, and Cincy, the division leaders. Denver and the Jets in the wild card spot. And these two teams fighting to join those wild card chasers. Miami was able to get a couple of fresh defensive linemen on the field, including Deion Jordan, their number one draft pick. Second and two. Rivers under pressure, and he's going to go down at the 35-yard line. And Phillips takes a timeout. Knowing how long it would take to get his team organized, Rivers has to take San Diego's final timeout. Cameron Wake again. Again, take a look downfield. You see what Rivers sees, which is everybody covered up. And then the pocket just implodes on him. There's Jordan at the bottom. He kind of come in, but really coming from the other side, that's Cameron Wake. Cameron Wake, guess what? What a surprise that he's sacking the quarterback. So now San Diego out of timeouts. And they're running out of downs as they've got two downs to move the chains. Third and seven. They need the 44-yard line for a first down. Hold for their last five on third down. Miami showing a lot of pressure up the middle. Will they bring them or bail out into coverage? Rivers throwing. That's complete. Across midfield and inside the 45-yard line, Shazi Ajiro Tutu with his first catch of the day. Oh, how quickly can you get the big guys up on the line of scrimmage? Rivers just going to spike the ball, stop the clock. 33 seconds to play. And again, Miami is going to take this opportunity to, again, cycle in some new defensive linemen. Trying to get some fresh legs to get after the quarterback. What a great job of delivering the football Philip Rivers did there. Yeah, he's been doing it for a long time, Greg. He's he's been fun to watch. Hard to believe he's in his tenth year already. Second and ten. And Miami. 
Miami's going to take a timeout. So Miami uses its first timeout here in the second half. And you know what? I think that's a good call because that guy right there is the game changer for them defensively. And let Cameron Wake take a knee, let him compose himself, get some air. Those of you expecting to see 60 minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS. Our matchup between the Chargers and the Dolphins. Greg Gumbel along with Dan Deerdorf. It is 20 to 16 Miami, 33 seconds to play. 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately after the game, except on the West Coast, where it'll be seen at its regularly scheduled time. This is where tackling is of utmost importance. The first guy has got to get him on the ground. Miss tackles is what will lose you a ball game right now if you're Miami. Sure tackling will put it away. Does Rivers work the sidelines? Stepping up over the middle. Complete inside the 30, inside the 25 to a Giro Tutu once again. Coming up on 20 seconds to play. But again, you can see how much time this uses up when the first guy is able to put the receiver on the ground. Rivers. That's complete and going out of bounds at about the 23 yard line is Gates. And they're going to say incomplete. incomplete. They're going to say he was juggling the ball as he went out of bounds. And you can see that before he was able, Philip Weaver there on the wheeler, rather there on the coverage, and Antonio Gates loses control of the football. Seven seconds to play. The Dolphins have to take a timeout. I think they might. Own. Did they have ten guys on the field? They got a guy off in a hurry. And again, the you can see right now they're bailing out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, it, they had 12. They got down to 11. But yeah, they didn't have time to get everybody lined up properly. And Danell Ellerby, that's no time to make a mistake. So Rivers can <laughs> Rivers can either go for the end zone here or try for a sideline pass and get one more play in. Seven seconds is mighty yeah, slim. Yeah. And he's trying to bring his team to the line before the officials are ready to let this thing start. Seven seconds on the clock. Rivers making adjustments at the line of scrimmage. Going for the end zone. Far side, it is knocked down. Knocked down by Brent Grimes, and this game is over. Well, what do you know? A DP who actually knocks the ball down in that situation instead of tipping it up into the air or trying to intercept it. Smart play by Brent Grimes, doing what he's coached to do. The all-time series coming into this game was tied at 14 apiece between these two teams. Miami grabs the edge. Well, Greg, a lot of respect goes the Miami Dolphins way for the way they played today, given the, the circumstances that have been swirling around that locker room. In the face of adversity, Miami comes out on top. Ryan Tannehill on the sideline. And victory is reality. Our final score, Miami 20, San Diego 16. Tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes, followed by The Amazing Race, The Good Wife, and The Mentalist. For Dan Deardor, for all of us, our CBS Sports crew here in Miami, Greg Gumbel saying so long, you've been watching the NFL on CBS.